we thought it will just take a few minutes with all three of you to talk about what is the purpose of all that, that we are doing today and how do we move forward and especially at the intersection of entrepreneurship, policy and technology, what do you wish to see happen? You know, the theme is beyond boundaries. So the idea is that how do we pole vault into the future and be an innovative country? So I would love to have each of you say whatever uh, you would like to say. Well, uh, Lakshmi, first of all, congratulations for this initiative. You know, GS is about uh, creating the ecosystem for entrepreneurship. It's about uh, creating uh, the ecosystem for innovation and to push the limits of disruption in many ways. So, you know, the Western societies have always innovated. You know, they've innovated for war machines. Now they're innovating for driverless cars. My view is that these are not the innovations that we need. We need in India innovation for, uh, so that we can provide water which is fluoride and arsenic free. We need innovation for our farmers so that they can provide seed and fertilizer based on soil and weather conditions on a real time basis. And uh, we need innovation so that we can push for, uh, you know, much cleaner air. And how do we push for electric vehicles which are uh, based on frugal engineering. So India needs to be a far more, uh, you know, we need to push the limits of innovation on the problems which India faces. Uh, so the Silicon Valley has the greatest number of innovators, but the least number of problems. <laughs> there are no problems, you know, so they are always innovating for issues which are not a problem, which are not a challenge. Whereas India is a country which has all the problems and we need to create innovators here. And uh, if we are able to solve the problems, and if we are f able to find solutions to the problems of our one billion people, water, food, uh, cleanliness, sewage, electricity, if we are able to find solutions to these problems, we are not actually finding solution to the one billion people of India, but we'll be finding solution to the seven billion people of the world who will be moving from poverty to middle class. Yeah. So GS is about building that ecosystem for innovation, building that ecosystem for, you know, disruption, building that ecosystem for startups to happen. Actually, your invitation for us to do this along with T-Hub was that, how can we showcase Indian innovation and Indian, so in the last two days, between yesterday and today, we had over 70 speakers from everything from design to art to music to technology to farm equipment to all kinds of things share their uh, innovations. And it's, a, it's great to see all of them coming together as a community. Um, so you're very fortunate to have Mr. Navtej Sarna exactly, also. I was gonna he's move. India's ambassador to USA. And he's, he's uh, <laughs> you know, firstly, he's a great innovator himself. Yes. Uh, he's, he's a great author. He's a great writer. He's written nine books. And uh, he's innovated in getting the GS to India. He's a very, very multifaceted and a very multi-talented personality. Please share us your thoughts. Well, thank you very much, Amitabh. Very kind words coming from you. They're a huge compliment considering how much you have done in this field. Uh, but it's a great pleasure to be here. And it's, uh, I'm really very, very excited that GS is happening in India and it's happening in Hyderabad. Hyderabad and uh, India are known in the United States as, uh, you know, the IT hubs and the birthplace of so many people who are doing wonders in the United States. So I'm really glad that a lot of the United States is actually going to come here and, and, and see uh, what we're doing. I think Amitabh made a very important point that we've got huge challenges, huge problems, and I think innovation is the answer when you, when you have, when you are uh, resource challenged then you have to innovate. Uh, and I think we, we do have huge challenges and we have uh, paucity of resources. So innovation is where we, where we score. So I think the GES does two things in, in one swipe. Uh, first, it provides a platform to innovators here in which you come together. Otherwise, you may be innovating in your town, in your university, in, in, in your uh, firm, but but how do you showcase it? How do you get best practices out of the entire innovation spectrum? And the second thing is that this is going to be a huge stage 
for telling the world what Indian innovation is all about. And I think uh, people don't quite realize that. A lot of our challenges are known all over the world. The people know we are… we have environment issues, people know we have water issues, we need to clean our rivers, we need to clean our air. I mean, the recent pollution thing made the front pages of New York Times and Washington Post. Yeah. yeah. But people don't know all the good work that is going on, which, if taken uh, to the next level, can actually form breakthroughs. Yes. So, this is… is the twin purpose of this. And I think it's going to be tremendous because in the India-US relations, I think one of the most underplayed but actually the strongest plank of the relationship is the people-to-people -people relationship. Uh, the rest of it, the politics, the economics, the investment, all that happens, uh, you know, it, it happens like a… But the people-to-people -people relationship, the democratic foundations, the… Uh, the… the freedom to innovate, uh, the ability for… for individuals and civil society members to rise to, uh, you know, any level, as you say, beyond boundaries. This is something which India and US have in common more than either of the countries has with any other country. Yeah. So, I think this is what we need to… Uh, yeah. underline and this is what I'm so excited about. So, thank you for having yeah. us here. And it's wonderful for us, you know, someone like Telangana government and T-Hub, which is one of the largest incubators, I I'm sure one of the reasons why you picked Hyderabad uh, as a space. So, moving on to, uh, you know, we've talked about India point of view, India to US, and we have somebody who's very famous in India, uh, uh, Armadavan. And you are also thinking of where can India pole vault into the future. What are the things that excite you, uh, Mary? I think um, what Mr. Amitabh said is so true that um, w while the rest of the world is innovating for the world, uh, very few are actually focusing their innovation to the problem that is um, typical and characteristic of India. Uh, I have a very interesting story to tell you about that, but I want to tell you that India is the problem, but the solutions also lie within India. You have to know this country well enough to know what sort of, to whether to treat it with an antibiotic or to treat it with an Ayurvedic medicine which actually hits the cause. Most of uh, the innovation that comes from the US is from, is just the superficial cosmetic solutions which we can't afford to have. I'll give you a phenomenal example that we have in India ourselves. Um, the Mars mission for instance that ISRO has been part of. Hi. Shreemi. So, the Mars mission that India was part of, and I'm sure you're aware of this, is that, uh, you know, we made the Mars mission possible in our very first attempt at a cost which is a fraction of what the rest of the world had spent uh, to put their uh, satellites around the orbit. Now, the reason was that the rockets and the technology that the America, uh, that NASA and the Russians had was far more powerful. Their cryogenic engines were far more powerful. They, they were able to actually penetrate into the Mars orbit before they could release the satellite. We didn't have those uh, powerful engines. We're stuck with our PSLVs uh, and the Vikas engines. Do you know how ISRO managed to make that mission so cheap and so effective? It is this an, an ideal example of how entrepreneurship should, uh, should develop and how you should look at solutions within our country. And NASA is baffled even now about how we made that possible with such a small amount of money. Anybody has any idea about how that became so quickly? How are we able to put… yes. Slingshot, true enough, but how did they, okay, slingshot is the actual answer, but how did they determine the position of the, of the forces that were acting on the slingshot? Yes? Yeah, yeah, gravity, gravity, and it was the, uh, was the, uh, anybody? Now, let me, let me, let me put you out of your misery here. The way they calculated the ability of the forces acting on the satellite was by looking at our very own Panchang. Did you all know that? <laughs> the Panchang was the, ro was the road map to tell them which planet will be in which position, which satellite of which planet will be in which position, which angle of the sunlight is, has the potential to deviate this particular satellite as it travels for a year with no energy from uh, Earth's orbit to Mars's orbit. Uh, and they were able to calculate that to near precision, which even baffled NASA, who's managed to put the uh, satellites right up to Neptune and Pluto. But this was from India. They knew about the, the Panchang, they knew that's what we base our culture and tradition out of and they were able to use it to technology and with great success. I think 
that should be a good enough example to know what we're capable of doing if you look within ourselves for the solution. Great. And I want that that, that leads us to that leads us to T Hub, who was doing exactly that. Just give us a quick thing of how many entrepreneurs you have, how many have you touched, what have you done so far? So at T Hub, obviously we were focusing on the entire ecosystem, right? And one of the things that we were talking about is exactly this, which is how do you get new solutions to problems that we're facing that are not just copy-paste from the West. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on here that is not happening anywhere else in the world. And what we're trying to do at TIOP is just give them the resources to carry those things out and actually create transformative innovation. Um, we've done about uh, 300 startups through the incubator uh, so far. We've got another four or 500 that have gone through multiple programs that we have. Uh, we do corporate innovation programs and help large multinationals connect to innovation happening in, startup, in the startup world, and we've had a couple of hundred there. And now we're also focusing on international startups that are looking at India uh, and helping solve some of our Indian challenges as well, and taking some of the Indian startups abroad to solve some of their problems. Yeah. So I, what I really see is that um, we're really seeing innovation happening much, much quicker, much deeper, much better than it's ever been done before, uh, and it's, the pace of innovation is increasing. And I just want to shout out to one person, you know, we, when we talk about innovation, India is known for films, right? We know of films, and there is someone here who is an Inc. fellow, he made a film completely in his village, all the actors are his family, nobody is paid, and that movie, uh, he's a scriptwriter for that movie, won every possible award. And he just finished his directorial debut, and that movie just won in Goa the top awards. Ere Gowda is here. I want to give him a big shout out. And he's someone who came from his village, worked as a security guard, worked as a, in somebody's house, and has got a great award now. So the point is, we are looking innovation in every possible field. It's here. We just need to give it a stage and celebrate it. So we want to thank both of you for bringing something like this here where we can give stage to amazing innovations that are coming from India, as well as work with everybody from around the world. We don't have the corner on it for sure. So any parting words, Amitabh and Mr. Sarna, both of you, to declare this a start? Or? No, no. No, I was no. only uh, thinking if there are any great entrepreneurs like him who've done a great job and who've not registered or were not registered or, or couldn't find an opportunity because there were so many 44,000 people applied and only 400 could right. get the opportunity. But if there are, you know, five or six great entrepreneurs here who've not got an opportunity to be a part of GS, we'll find some way for them to be a part of GS. Uh, have you registered for GS? No, he didn't even. <laughs> no, he just came for this so two days ago. So if there are five or six great Great uh, young entrepreneurs here would be keen to come Great, for we'll you. We'll work with T Hub so, and so give we'll you collaborate with T Hub and give them an opportunity somehow. Because we have someone, Devi, who's working on farm equipment for uh, the poor and yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, so people like her, particularly women entrepreneurs. You know, it's all about Great. women's first prosperity for all. We'll so definitely curate yeah, some so, names for you. So some sure. some names if T Hub sure. can recommend, we'll be very happy to support them. This is amazing. Well, I, I can just take the same idea forward that if you do c curate uh, this small hub of five or six uh, entrepreneurs and innovators, I think you should not just simply have them here. You yeah. should send them across. Send them across we to the United to. States. Yes. We'll help, we'll work with you. Uh, we'll, be great. We'll, we'll help them get them face time out there because while you may be solving local problems, that doesn't mean you can't solve global problems. Because I can tell you from my personal experience, I was based in the United States about 17, 18, 20 years ago. Uh, and, you know, we, we had a certain image of India in the United States, which was not a very, was not a very complimentary image. Yeah. And one of the things that began the change of the image was the role of people like you, young people like you, who's got solutions to the Y2K problem. Yes. The minute Indians started working on Y2K problems, <laughs> Indians were not seen as, you know, low, uh, low salary techies, but they were seen as people who could really solve problems. So I think, take this, uh, curate this yes. little box 
and sure. let's let's send it out and actually that's been our purpose you know i spent 25 years in us and part of the thing is the amazing people we have are not telling their stories in the way that it can be heard so that's the reason we are excited to work with t hub to create this platform in the last two days over 3000 people came by here and heard these 70 the 70 entrepreneurs it's been amazing the kind of support they've been getting, getting people walking up to them and saying how can i help you that validation itself is great so thank you so much both these things are amazing offers mary any parting words i think this is a phenomenal opportunity this is a great platform um one of the things that i see happening all around the world is that people are individually developing the technology without being aware of what the other person is developed on how much he has reached in that and if there is enough resources and time worthy of being invested in the project that you're doing currently so uh, mr amitabh there is a platform that we could provide where all the innovators are actually abreast with the progress of other people who are inventing solutions to all these problems then they can decide whether it is better to build on the technology that already exists whether that technology exists or not and more importantly whether they have to discard it and move on to something else that would save a lot of time and uh, and if we have that within india if we I, we were talking to the uh, you know the white house guys when we were there in washington dc they're making a consolidated effort to create that platform amongst the innovators so they don't wait uh, waste funds and you know, and time trying to develop an already solved problem so if we can have that within our country i think that will help immensely uh, in the in the rate of progress that we are able to achieve also i think that um, Uh, we indians the world over are actually loved and respected in whichever community we go to and i'm sure you will agree sir in the us as well depend compared to the other diasporas we're known to be honest integral we are we are known to provide uh, positively to the community that we live in and we are probably the best citizens that any country can uh, proudly say uh, they have i think we can build on that on that goodwill largely if we are able to again provide solutions from this country at a cost which is for much 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 cheaper and with the same integrity as uh, we've been providing all other services we have been uh, you know the 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 bedrock of the cultures in the world you know yoga is yoga and meditation has big, taken over big time i think very soon technology from india will also be at the same uh, bar and level as all the other things in the world thank, thank you, you so, so much. much big shout out to telangana government and t hub for bringing this here Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.